What's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. We got a play test of the Copa Pure 2 Pluses and I wanted to do a play test of these. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done the initial review, but I want to do a play test before the one month review to do kind of a give you guys a comparison between the point one which I've done the one month review of now um, as well as the play test of those ones just to give you guys a little bit of a juxtaposition and then you can decide which one is best for you. Now, I think these are a step up from the Copa Pure Point Ones, uh, but that is gonna be, an, at the end of the day, up for you guys to decide. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. All right, here we go. So getting these on feet quick. I do have a pair of Wee Foot Grip Socks, so if you guys are, are interested in a discount code, I'll leave that link down in the description box below. They are my favorite grip socks. They come in the thin version, which I'm wearing now, and a thick version as well, which are great for a little bit more padding and stuff as you uh, start to break in your boots. So here we go, getting the, uh, the boots on feet. The Copa Pure Plus, this being the second model, so two plus, is very, very good. I am super impressed with what they've done here. Do I wish they made some changes to the heel area that were similar to the point one model? Yes, I wish they had just done the same, um, the same heel area from the point one, but the heel area in this one is not that bad. Um, in fact, I would still say it's an upgrade from the previous generation uh, Copa Pure 1, so both the Plus and the Point 1 had a similar heel area. This is a little bit of an improvement on those, um, but again, not as much of an improvement as the comfort level from that Point 1 model in the upgraded version. One thing you'll notice straight away with the Copa Pure Plus is that it wraps your foot much more seamlessly than the Point One model does. And a lot of that comes down to the prime knit collar that sits right underneath where the laces are. So now that this is a Plus model and they no longer have the, the Copa Pure Plus being a laceless model, I actually think that was a great decision by the Adidas brand to make sure that you're really getting a good lockdown as the leather stretches. Because I would say for comfort level, these are actually almost more comfortable than the Copa Pure Point One simply because of that knit in the lacing system area. I just think it gives a much more natural uh, fit to it and also a little bit more, I don't wanna say barefoot because the material of the upper is the same. So from a touch perspective, they're very similar to that. Um, but from just a feeling perspective on feet, I feel better in these than I do in that point one model. And I just feel like these offer just a much more seamless fit and feel. That being said, I am coming at it from the bias of really enjoying knit models of football boots. So not only, you know, a fully knit football boot like the GX, but even boots that are in the same category, um, like the Morelia Neo 4 Beta, even Ultreza 3 from Asics, DS Lite X Fly 5, um, X Fly Pro. These are all boots that have the synthetic midfoot, like this one does. And then you also have a little bit of a sportier, or I won't say speed boot like sole plate, um, but a little more aggressive sole plate with the leather forefoot. These are all boots, 99 gram leather. These are all boots that follow the exact same formula and really give a nice feet, fit and feel around feet. And the ones that I tend to like the most, like the Neo 4 Beta, have that knit in the midfoot. One of the things you notice as soon as you put your feet in these boots is how much that knit material helps with the, uh, with the heel. So if you had, similar to the point one model, if you had the point one heel area with this knit, I think it would be one of the most crazy on feet experiences in my opinion. Um, but if you had the this heel area with the normal tongue without the knit, you would really struggle, I think, to find the amount of grip in the heel area you're looking for. And that's, that's why I'm not sure why they made that decision to make the heels different. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, even starting out with some ladder drills, you do have a little bit of slippage, I feel, 
in the heel area because they've put basically a band of padding like that on the heel. And unlike say the Neo 4 Beta, it doesn't really wrap your ankle and your Achilles tight enough. And so any sort of like plant and rotate, I get that little bit of slippage in that area, which is just a little bit annoying. <laughs> But it's not, I mean, I don't know. It's not that big of a deal, but it is just something to keep, be aware of. Like I have less slippage in the 0.1 model, which of course is annoying because I feel like the plus model should be that level up. But again, as I said, as you pivot, there's just a, even doing this, there's a tiny bit of slippage in that heel area, which unfortunately grip socks will not take care of um, no matter how good they are. Yeah. But underfoot feeling feels awesome. The torsion frame feels great. I don't have any complaints about it. Obviously with the Nemesis line, you know, it was popular with the Nemesis line and they've put it a very similar type of frame in the new Predator with just slightly different studs. And that seems to be really good as well. So they're kind of sticking to their formula, which I don't blame them for. This has got really good underfoot feel. I feel like with the half moon shaped studs that you get with this one, it really does provide a nice amount of grip into artificial ground and with firm ground. So you're gonna get that pivot power you need, but because they're half moon shaped, they do give a really nice amount of grip as well going side to side. So you're not sliding all over the place on a pitch like this. I would say overall though, the fusion skin does a nice job of wrapping your midfoot. I will say it's not the greatest as far as lockdown goes. It doesn't have like epic, epic lockdown like you would get from the midfoot of a Morelli Neo 4 Beta, um, but it does do a pretty nice job at wrapping your midfoot, especially with the, the knit, which is obviously adding quite a, quite a bit of structure to, and, and predetermined shape. For me, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the uh, one month review, but they did take me a little bit of extra time to break in, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just something to keep in mind if you have wider foot shape. But if you're looking for a modern fit and feel from a leather football boot, these are, I don't know, definitely up there. Do I think they're, um, you know, absolutely perfect? No, of course not. But I do think they offer a pretty good package and I would say they fit, they fit and sit about middle of the pack of the competitors now that Nike has the Tiempo out of the leather football boot market as well as Puma with the King. So now that this is kind of the only, you know, major boot brand, one of the main three, I guess, although arguably New Balance is better than Adidas in a lot of ways and definitely better than Puma. Um, I would say that these are, yeah, definitely a step up above the point one in my opinion, as far as like fit and comfort goes and just like seamless performance. But just as far as like what they now have to compete with, they're definitely not as insanely competitive as maybe they were with the Tiempo. I thought when the Tiempo Legend 9 still existed and Copa Pure came out, the original one, I was like, ooh, definitely leaving Nike, giving, a, giving Nike a run for its money. So realistically, who is the Copa made for? Made for somebody who really wants the leather feel, who wants something a little more modern, and who wants, oop, uh, and who wants something that's gonna fit and give you a really nice underfoot feel while also giving you a really nice amount of comfort and performance as you start to break them in. Are there better options on the market? Yeah. But do these provide a very adequate fit and feel? Yes, absolutely. So as far as sizing and kind of fit goes, I would say definitely go true to size. If you're somebody who has, whoop, hello, talk and play at the same time. Um, if you're somebody who has super wide midfoot, I probably wouldn't recommend these. I'd probably go for New Balance 442 instead. Um, but for most people, I think these are gonna be just fine. And again, true to size. So the real question then is, what do you pick these over? 
Do you pick them over a 442 that's about half the price? Maybe for like performance benefits, especially in the sole plate area. Do you pick it over a Morelia Neo 4 or Neo 4 Elite? So beta made in Japan or an Elite model? I don't think so. So where does that leave this one, right? Well, maybe it leaves it sort of in the list of, can you get it for sale? Can you find it for similar money to the 442? Which is kind of rough for a boot that retails for like 230 bucks. I was, uh, had a short conversation with Ryan Tafazzoli, who you guys probably follow on YouTube and Instagram plays in England and he wears these ones actually pretty pretty significant like like quite a bit of the time and um, prefers these over the 0.1 model and I would tend to agree I think if you're if you're on the market and you fit in both models I would highly recommend you try the plus model over the 0.1 I just think it gives you a little bit extra pizzazz to the boot and a little more kind of freedom to it just it feels more barefoot with the addition of that with the addition of the prime knit in the in the collar and in the lacing system area but one benefit i guess to the copa pure line as opposed to some of the other models out there is that they do have an option for those of you who like knit and those of you who want the standard youth throat tongue which i guess is a like i see that as a positive i reckon and uh that way you can really choose if you're set on staying with Adidas and that's what you want. I think, ooh, um, I think that's a great option for a lot of people. But general performance as I'm going through these dribbling drills is pretty spot on for what they are. I think the Pure gives you, you know, a very, very undistracted touch like you know exactly as soon as you hit the ball you know exactly where that ball is going because of kind of the the padded kind of plushness sensation of the upper which if you ask me is the main reason you buy this over something else right like you know this is the this is a like the very you can look how soft that leather is they've done a really fantastic job of uh doing some absolute wizardry on the calf skin the fact that it isn't kangaroo leather and it still feels this way is pretty remarkable um, so props to adidas for that for sure now is it softer than made in japan no of course not but is it softer than the new balance 442 uh, the normal model yeah but not the gold all k leather model i think that one's a little bit softer but the fact that these are calf skin and they feel this soft in the forefoot, really, really nice. All right, little dribbling action here. Gonna get into both sides. Instead of doing the cone line, which we usually do in play tests, I'm gonna go through and just do a little bit of a 1v1. So dribble up to the cone, do whatever move I want to the side, just as if we're exiting that cone line drill from previous um, play test and just nice and easy pass just as we talk about some of the uh, some of the passing feel so fusion skin on the inside has quite a I don't think it's tempo legend 9 amount of padding but definitely has a decent amount of padding on that instep and so if you're somebody who likes a little bit of that I don't know kind of effortless cushion sensation when passing the ball these are definitely going to be your move over Morelia Neo 4 which I think is again oy, uh, the main competitor for this football boot now that it's knit in the midfoot and the majority of the boot materials are you know relatively the same from a construction standpoint so if you're looking for like the thinnest possible leather I'd go for Adler, if you're looking for the most premium sensation on feet from a leather boot perspective, Adler's up there, but made in Japan, Mizuno is kind of hard to beat. If you're looking for the most overall kind of plush padded sensation, Morelia 2 or these, 
if you're looking for the least expensive model on the market, highly recommend New Balance. Oh, hello. We're gonna start that one over. Uh, highly recommend New Balance 442. Retails for like 130 bucks, which is just insane. Nice, yeah. I would say passing is one thing that I really enjoy with these because it's kind of just no distractions, really simple. There's no texturing on the upper at all. So as I'm coming around, you make your move. And as you're passing, it's just like a no BS, very clean sensation as you're striking the ball with the instep. But I'm interested if there are any really high level pros that wear the Copa Pure that are watching this video. Ryan, I include you in this if you're watching just leave your comments of why you wear this and like what features of this boot make you pick this over uh, made in Japan model or made in um, made in Italy model or I don't know like all the other boots that I've mentioned why do you pick this one and fair enough if you've got a deal you've got a deal but even even if you have an Adidas boot deal I want to know why you picked this one as opposed to something else from their lineup. This particular drill with the one-on-ones, I'm really starting to feel kind of how the heel area influences the lockdown, which, as I said, are kind of mediocre at best. I think the heel area is worse than the one on the point one, so that's kind of frustrating. Um, but is it comfortable? Yeah, but it does just slide around a little bit too much for my liking. So that's why this boot will never be a game boot for me. It's only gonna be a training boot at best. Definitely for individual sessions, um, it'll, be, it'll be great. But um, for me, a game boot needs to be really locked in. That's why I think Morelia Neo 4 is, a, is just an overall superior product to this as far as kind of what, what the package brings given that these are the same construction. All right, just before we get into a little bit more proper striking, I'm gonna take the opportunity to take these off. They're giving me a little bit of hot spot still on the outside, which, which you guys will see in the one month review reflects the break-in score. They're, they're definitely less, um, less pliable straight out of the box than the .1 version. And I know I've compared these to the .1 quite a bit, but it's, it's the easiest competitor, right? Because it's its own brand and there's just tiny subtle changes to it. Um, one thing that I think actually might help is if it for the heel lockdown is if you guys can see this padding, that heel thing that I told you about, that little kind of U shape that goes around the back in this padding area. I think if they were to make that, I'm just now realizing as I'm kind of touching this, um, obviously there's quite a bit of wear in these shoes. I've, wear, I've worn them quite a bit already. And yes, they're still giving me uh, sort of hot spots on the outside of my foot, but that is just the knit plus this fusion skin does kind of, it's pretty tight around the midfoot. And I would say that's the case for most of the Adidas boots. The shape of their boots seems to be quite roomy in the forefoot and quite thin in the midfoot, which I don't know if I, love um, that's why i think the predator has really nice fit and feel once you break it in but it provides the same amount of kind of issues in this midfoot area that i have with these uh, over time so it does take quite a bit of time to break in which is unfortunate now as far as uh, the heel area the padding in this heel i really wish that adidas would put stiffer padding in there and of course you might be thinking like what do you mean stiffer padding so if you can see there's that little pad this pad basically has zero like there's no structure to it it literally just feels like they've put a little bit of extra foam padding from the midfoot just like in and around this area but there's no structure unfortunately to that padding which is really annoying whereas if you go to the Morelia Neo 4 beta though that padding is much more substantial. And what I think that does is I think it locks your Achilles in. Yes, okay, maybe some people, are, like more people will find that you'll get blisters in the heel area, but I do think it would be for the betterment of the performance of the shoe. Because I think if you put pads like this in the heel area, the sensation on your feet makes it feel like you're gonna have a lot of lockdown. But as you start to move around, the pads aren't thick enough to actually hold your Achilles and your ankle into the back of the shoe. So that's what provides a lot, or that's what kind of 
forces your foot to twist and turn in, in sort of this type of motion, like, like side to side this way. And that to me is a really big missed opportunity from Adidas because I think a lot of people loved um, leather F50s for the fact that they felt like a speed boot. And I'm not, again, I'm not trying to say they should build the Copa into a speed boot. But the reason they people loved the leather speed boots, the, the reason people loved the X99 gram leather speed portal with the leather forefoot is because it combined the epic lockdown of a speed boot in this midfoot area um, with the comfort and performance and touch of a leather forefoot. This construction has all the right recipe. It's the right recipe for what they're trying to go for. I just think the heel area really fluffs this up because I think the rest of the package is actually really good on this boot. And I'm bummed that they, they didn't add like substantial enough padding in the heel area to make it feel super, super locked in, which the addition of the knit was supposed to do. So shooting is where I think the Copa Pure struggles a little bit. Like obviously there's technique involved in like, you know, me being able to shoot well. And I always say like, hey, it's not, you, it's not, the, it's not the boots, it's you. Um, but for me, a boot has to feel secure and locked in. Ooh, nice. Secure and locked in. And as I'm coming up to shoot, as I plant, there's a bit of space that opens up right here, kind of in this inside the ankle area, which is a product of the padding on the heel area not being substantial enough. What that does is it essentially forces my heel to move. So as I'm coming up, as you guys see me come up to the shot and I plant, my ankle is twisting a little bit. I mean, yeah, it's small. It's probably millimeters of distance, but that slippage is really disorienting when, when you're coming up and hitting like a, a dipped shot like that or a curved shot or anything where you're trying to get a, a really clean plant foot. Because if you plant well, you can, that knuckled, right? So if you get a really good plant foot, that sets up your shot so well. But if I'm moving even just a little bit inside the heel area of these boots, I don't know, man. It just, it frustrates me a little bit. If at the end of the day, you can handle, fair enough, like more power to you. I just, I really want to be able to feel secure in these, in these shots and like be able to hit those without feeling any sort of like weird slippage in my plant foot. Um, and I, you know, I don't say, I don't think it's like a dangerous amount of slippage. <laughs> Nice, love that. I, I wouldn't say it's like a dangerous amount of slippage, but it's just something that like, I'm not really keen on. Ooh, one thing though that I imagine if you are somebody that has a pretty decently wide heel area, I reckon you'd be totally fine in these. <laughs> Ooh, totally fine in these. It's just because I have that wide forefoot and midfoot, it really, as the shoe breaks in and I'll, in the next uh, clip, I'll show you guys what I mean, but it really forces the material to stretch. And so in turn, it's gonna stretch the heel area as well. And I'll show you that right now. Okay, so you can see with the boots, see how my midfoot kind of comes out on the side there? There's my, my toe. So the toe comes up right up to the end, which is great, no problems. But as I was saying before, as I plant this way, there's a gap. Look at that gap. The gap kind of forms and I'm not even like posing. I'm just like, there you go. Look at that, boom. See, flush, gap. And as I do that at high speed, it really, really kind of, my, my ankle like moves back and forth in there. So if you were to have much kind of, uh, if you had a much more neutral shaped foot, like your foot was pretty consistent, you're gonna be totally fine in these. It's just for those of us who have thin heel areas and a wider toe box or a wider midfoot, as that midfoot stretches, it's gonna stretch this area of the boot as well, which forces kind of that weird cavernous stuff that's happening as I'm planting. And oh, look at that, boom, see? So that's what happens. And that's just like not acceptable for me. All right, a little bit of bended shots here. Try to get through. <laughs> Yeah, decent, but a little bit more 
outside if I can, and that'll come with pushing the ball a little bit wider. So here we go. Ooh, better technique, but see, this is what I'm talking about. So in that, in that movement right there, and I'm not making any excuse for the quality of that shot. As I'm coming here and planting, the entire, my entire foot is shifting and the Wii Foot Grip Socks are fantastic and they give a ton of grip, but a grip sock isn't gonna help if the boot just like, the boot just like doesn't have the necessary wrap and space um, necessary to hold your foot in place. I do wonder though, if there was a way to, um, I wonder if there was a way to kind of tape my heel area. I don't know, like maybe during training, I'll try it one day. Maybe I'll try it one day, but like taping your heel area so that feet shapes like mine kind of fit flush to the inside of the boot. And I wonder if that would make, ooh, ow. Uh, if that would make any sort of difference in the way that these fit and feel. Cause I do think the pro as an overall product, they're decent. I don't love them, but I think they're nice. There it is. I think they're pretty good, but it really like for my type of foot shape, these really fall apart in like really high aggressive cutting situations because they just don't do a very good job at seamlessly wrapping your foot in a, in a way that say like even an 11 Pro does, which maybe might be a topic of interest for those of you who really loved the 11 Pro. If you've seen my one month review of the 11 Pro, you know that I wasn't all that stoked with it, but I do think overall it's a really nice like distractionless package. I think I'm gonna wear 11 Pro, even though I think this is like technically speaking, a better product. Oh shit. Oh, that came right on the camera. Holy moly, that scared me. Um, even though this is like technologically a better product, I do think that I fit better in the 11 Pro just because of how the 11 Pro has such a, such a seamless, no BS heel area. And that for me is always, always, always a big part of the boot playing experience is that heel area. Like how good does that heel area wrap around and give you, oh, crossbar. Um, and give you that sort of nice wrapped sensation. So if you can get your hands on an 11 Pro, maybe you'll like those more. Like if you have a similar foot shape to mine, I think you'd like the 11 Pro more. Oh, nasty, dang. Um, but if you're someone like me who has, you know, kind of an awkward heel shape in comparison to the midfoot and the forefoot, oh, then I probably would recommend the 11 Pro. But again, we're sticking with Adidas just for the sake of this quick conversation. Um, but if you're somebody who really has a pretty, Oh gosh, I'm gonna do one more on that side. Um, if you're somebody who has a pretty neutral shape to your foot and a pretty consistent, like you're about the same width in the forefoot, midfoot and heel area, even if you've got a little bit of a wider foot, I think you'll be fine. It's just the issue becomes complicated when you're like me and you have my foot's like all wonky. And that's when these, I think, really fall apart. And I find it to be the same with the 0.1 model. The Copa is just not it for my particular foot shape, but um, could be for some other of you. There we go, nice. We'll end on that one. All right, fam, that is gonna be it for the play test of the Copa Pure 2 Plus. Now, I'm a bit, I'm a bit mixed about this product because walking around, it feels really comfy, like no doubt. It feels really comfortable, wraps your foot really well. I think the shape of it with the knit in the midfoot is much better in my opinion than the 0.1 model. Like it just feels more complete as a product. That being said, once I start getting into more perf like higher performance and all I mean is like just start moving faster and doing like more aggressive movements, these kind of fall apart a little bit. And it's really disappointing because I think the Copa has such a, such a strong legacy in the football boot world. The Copa has been around for a really long time and obviously has had many iterations. Copa Mundial, Copa Icon, Copa Pure, Copa Sense, like all the all of the different variations, right? So there's quite a bit of heritage and it's a bummer that they've, they have all the right pieces. They just didn't execute it in a way that 
I'm super pumped with. I mean, I know there are some people who are gonna absolutely love these and these will fit perfectly, which more power to you, but I just, I don't know. They're just not my thing. And I think I feel the same way about the 0.1 model too. Which one would I wear? I know in the beginning of this video, I said I would wear these more. Honestly, I think I'm gonna pick the 0.1 model because of the heel area. Like it just, it, and I don't really like that boot that much. I don't, like I think it's a good product overall. I think if you fit in that product, you're gonna be really happy with it. But for my foot shape, and I know, you know, obviously my, my reviews are all subjective, right? They're all my own opinion. It's, I'm not like, yes, it's a good product. And, and the one month review, rating will kind of take that into account as being just like a generally pretty good product but for me man these are these are hard to hard to justify like wearing these over literally anything else because i'm gonna pick new balance 442 over this i'm gonna pick morelia neo 4 over this i'm gonna pick ultraza 3 over this any well any of the a6 boots i'm picking over this and really then it becomes a question of like would I, why would I pick this if I want a leather boot feel when I could pick up the Morelia Neo 4 Beta and it's the same construction but it fits and feels and performs, in my opinion, on my feet, like 10 times better. So, I don't know. It's, uh, it's kind of going to be a question and I, I don't, I don't want to make this review seem super negative, but I also want to share with you that I, I think Copa Pure 2 Plus is good it's a good product if you fit in it if you don't fit in it exactly how this is meant to fit stay away honestly stay away because it's just going to be a doozy and you're going to find you're going to slip too much and it's just not going to be it now from a touch perspective from a general like passing feel perspective really nice really plush if you're looking for that leather boot feel i think this definitely provides that um, but again it's just like the movements at higher speeds really bug me with this one. Just doesn't give the right fit and feel. And I think from the Adidas brand, I would pick Predator over this any day. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That kind of concludes the review. I'll kind of I'll have more concise and explicit ratings and thoughts in the one month review, which will be coming out quite um, quite soon after this review will. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Uh, as you guys know, with videos like this, I give my totally unfiltered, honest opinion about boots because I really don't care. I think brands uh, need that feedback, and if they don't want that feedback, then they're not doing the right thing. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. That's just my opinion. I think there are better boots on the market than this, but that being said, it's been it's been nice to be able to kind of break this in and see what it's all about because I do think for some people this is going to be an excellent product for you. So awesome, guys. Well, I appreciate you. Again, WeFoot, WeFoot uh, link for 20% off is in the description box below. You can go check those out. As always, be awesome. Take care. I'll see you all in the next video.